thank you all for all the work that we need to do. There's a fair bit of buzz going on, so you're either swapping with phone numbers or whatever you're doing, but uh, it was pretty good. Um, what I'd like to do now is to get uh, the, the the table captains, the Miff War Horses and Alan Bros of, of this room, uh, to come up here one by one. I'll call you one by one um, to talk through just a quick three minute summary of uh, what the table discussed and how you went about that. And we'll perhaps try and keep maybe a couple of minutes for questions and try and wrap this up by about 10 past if that's okay. So I might just do it from around the room. So the nearest table, Ian, I think you're. Uh, I'm just standing here. Yeah, um, yeah, or we could, whatever. I've got a loud voice. You're a loud voice, you go I've for it. I've got a loud voice. Um, uh, no, you don't want to look at them because it's very messy. It sort of looks like my brain inside. Um, so the two questions were, the big meta question was identify the issues impacting research use and access to public knowledge. Um, pretty common theme that we all struggle with um, um, the linguistics of actually what that question meant. And we struggled with um, understanding what research was, what the <laughs> publics were. <laughs> you know, you about, I, think it's, I think it's really, really valid. You have a very simple question, but if, you, if, you're, if you're clear that public, does public just mean particular audiences? Does it mean audiences that want to um, know the knowledge? Does it mean policy makers? We spoke about, um, and if you think about knowledge, is knowledge just the material that's in academic journals? Is it, the, is it public knowledge the material that's funded by public research? So to have a meaningful conversation, I think the conclusion was, around this topic, we needed better definitions and we needed agreed understanding. And because we didn't have that, we went out to have these discussions, we were distracted. And what we were distracted by was the very well organized um, and commercialized system of public translation, public knowledge translation at the present time. But there were tremendously powerful players in there, the commercialization and IP was such a major um, part of that. And one of the conclusions we sort of were coming to is that we need to break the system. And to break the system, we might need a legal approach. And a legal approach would mean that we were really accepting that incrementally, we were not getting anywhere. So we needed some major change. My boss started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just concerned that we might not get it recorded. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm done. <laughs> 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 exactly, so I think that there was, so there was a lot of debate about what those topics were and how we would define them. And I think that there was, we struggled to find simple solutions that we would tick off. And there was a feeling that we wouldn't go anywhere we thought that was a really big issue around commercialization and how um, academic knowledge was generated and the publishing systems. We, we actually have a couple of minutes for questions or comments. So if anyone who was on that table wanted to make a comment or add to what I had to say, or perhaps asking a real curly question. Um, now to your opportunity. You've got a couple of minutes. That, I'm not seeing any movement, so I think that's uh, silence. So well done. Thank you, Ian. It's brilliant work. Well done. Round of applause for Ian. Uh, can I ask Ginny um, as the next table to um, present and give us a summary of your, your table's work? It's about 18 pages, I think. <laughs> Why we need it. 
And then we discussed who the key players were, and we had a number of, dis oh, I'm sorry, and the one key, absolutely key reason was that we needed a bit, but we needed to define our vision first, what we were doing. <laughs> which, which I sort of feel like we all, all think we know what we're trying to do, but it's absolutely mm. right, we need to define what we're, we're actually trying to get to. And then, we'll like um, and then we talked about who's involved. So the, so the question actually said, who's driving, who's hitchhiking, who's <laughs> still at bus station? <laughs> so, um, the first group decided that um, the key drivers, uh, we keep coming back to the key drivers of the funders and government, um, both at federal and uh, state level, but also the libraries, academic and public are really important, and the university executive. So those are the key, the key drivers. And then we talked about those who might implement it. So we came back to libraries again, but also the platform providers, whatever they might be, and publishers, and that we had a bracket around that, that could be all types of groups. And then the first group, we also talked about there's a whole bunch of people we need to agitate on the outside. So we had researchers definitely as agitators. Um, we thought we could break in the ABC, um, and then civil society organisations and NGOs. So they're not going to be responsible necessarily for building the right things, but they're going to find the right originally, potentially, but they, could, they need to be part of it somehow. Um, and then we did a very simple roadmap with the group. <laughs> there we go. Oh, great. So we need a vision. We need to clearly state it, define the problem, which I think we've sort of done. We agree that we need policies. Um, we did have a discussion about whether we need law, except, but if not, we certainly need policy to speak. So we can just hold it on me, for example, around whatever. There's no compliance. We need to address the incentive issue. And then we have a big bit at the bottom, which is practical implementation, and we don't quite know what that is yet. So there you go. So I don't think it's going to be funded. <laughs> again, thank you, Jenny. And um, again, if there's anyone who wants to make a comment, who might have gone through the table or make a, or a question, put something to the, to the floor, um, please do so. You've got about a minute or so. Again, I, I'm not seeing anything. That's fantastic. Um, and it's great that the roadmap's already done. So yeah. Yeah, um, I, I can see I can see a working party emerging, <laughs> and I can see a book, great book title, stuff for publishers. So, so what actually shove it up the publishers. <laughs> 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 all right, we all we can leave that till afterwards. That uh, discussion, Amanda, um, Carolyn, can we perhaps move to your table and uh, and your topic? Carolyn, I move to uh, Gemma, I think it is, um, at the next tape. Government documents that they should be published. 
However, we need something that aims the access by everybody on research that's been done before, so we don't repeat the research. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the key things that came out are researchers even aware that a lot of the research they do can't be found later on. Mm. Um, are government managers aware and do they recognise the issue? Um, people who work with government managers said no, they don't. They don't care. Um, and there's a lack of incentive to create this because, as we've been discussed today, the reward system is easy to access. Yeah. Um, so step one, we need a system level investigation about who is doing what in terms of public information. Step two, we need to educate the important steps. Um, the accessibility of government documents. Um, step three, we need a publication path, and we probably do need it legislated, because if it's not legislated, people aren't going to it. It'll never happen. And um, apparently there's already discussion by the National Data Commission for formulating a bill about data and data release, and perhaps this could be looked at in relation to government documents. Um, one key point was that libraries seem to care about the future of current research, but governments don't seem to, and perhaps that needs to change. Is there anything else? Yeah. Any, any other comments or nothing else to, to add to any of the groups? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Well done. Now we um, might move over to, just let me see, table. Uh, table A, I think Elizabeth, is it the, um, the really, really difficult table? Um, in terms of the point about a uh, break the system, 
couple of phrases from the table here were, let's start a revolution. <laughs> um, the Beatles do come to mind. But um, another one was that we've got to break the oligarchy of the publication sector as it's happening at the moment. Shifting the focus to one of our public and social value rather than academic and financial value. Acknowledging the value of collaboration through research in increasing the overall public value. And more emphasis on peer-reviewed research database sites such as Wikileaks. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Changing the copyright law was another suggestion. Prioritising not-for-profit, going with an iTunes model, um, and looking at the structures because currently they don't include the non-traditional uh, research in the areas of the arts and music. So please feel free to, to add any of the things that were at the tables. Oh, okay. Sorry, I did forget that one. We need to prioritise not-for-profit, keep it all in the public domain and piss them off. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, look, I think there was, was a lot in that question. I think you, that table did fantastic, so well done. Um, and Penelope, that's a hard table to follow. So could you uh, uh, speak to your question? And, um, sure. I, I don't have anything um, like this. Does stipulate that there has to be open access, but does anyone know that this gets enforced? Well, 
Right, there's no penalties and there's no follow up and there's no withholding of the last bit of the grant like like some private organisations do. So there isn't much incentive to um, break that. And uh, so the incentives were really, we didn't tell them very much, but the incentives were a little bit more along the lines of enforcing those, um, those mandates, um, enforcing uh, barrier, low, lower barriers to research, funding, crowdfunding. Just having a policy of you know, so green um, open access at the very least, or low barrier to entry. But we didn't get to the. Oh, that's okay. We, we didn't intend to get to the end, so <laughs> <laughs> it was probably impossible. Um, any comments or questions for Penelope and her table? Uh, Thomas? I, I, mean, I was just going to say one, one of the things that's come up in a, a few of these was um, you know, there are policies in place, but they're not enforced. There are punishments for, for breaking them, and there aren't rewards for achieving them. And also, because those don't exist, it's an, if it's an extra piece of effort, and there's no reason to do it, people don't do it. And part of the reason where technology can come into this is that the default should be open access, and the barrier to achieving that is open access in the Um, next steps. Uh, first, I want to thank you all for um, for contributing to that because essentially around the t around the room we created a document or at least a draft of some work. Um, the next steps in the process is to write this up and then to feed it back to this group uh, to ensure we haven't missed out on anything. Or I mean, there'll definitely be things missing, so an opportunity to to feed into that process. And then probably beyond that. Um, there's some, I guess, up to APL and others to uh, what's the action to implement uh, what comes out of this. So I'll leave that, I'll leave, leave that in your capable hands, Amanda, and uh, hand back to you to um, uh, to wrap up today's session. And finally, can I just also thank again the, ta the table leaders? That's no easy task to, to do that. So yeah. thank you. Uh, yes, and so I'm just, I'm actually so pleased, we're even going to finish a little bit early, so that's, yeah. that's uh, wonderful. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to briefly wrap things up. Firstly, thank you all so much for coming and for staying to participate in that session. Uh, I, you know, I thought it was really wonderful and um, I always feel like uh, there's so much intelligence in the room and it's just so good to actually be able to share that. Um, even though I know sometimes it can feel like, uh, what's the point? But hopefully uh, we can continue to progress this because, you know, I saw a great uh, bit of, uh, a, a, a big sort of sign, it might have been graffiti, when I, I was in the US recently that said, don't get angry, get organised. <laughs> and I thought, that's it, you know? What, what, <laughs> uh, the difference between change and no change is, is being organised. So uh, this is a step in that direction. I don't think anybody quite knows what being organised means, or what knowledge or research or public or any of those other ones mean, but you know. <laughs> hey, we're academics, so we're, you know, that, that'll, definitions will all be, be argued for a long time. But, um, uh, so firstly, uh, we've got a systematic review, introduction to systematic review session tomorrow. If anybody's interested, I think there's still places, I'm not quite sure where we're up to, but um, that's sort of a, that'll be a hands-on kind of workshop, so just if you really want to understand systematic reviews. Um, with this, as, as uh, Brennan said, uh, we are... Uh, a couple of people suggested this idea of turning this into some kind of uh, publicly contributed document with a lot of uh, authors, including all of you. So I'll be trying to do that over the uh, next few months or so. But, you know, probably won't happen super fast, but um, 
I'll, and I will kind of try and set up the notes publicly and if anybody's interested in participating. Um, uh, you know, there's a number of us who are keen to kind of keep this thing going. There's another kind of group around open scholarship and the, um, some Canadian academics who are keen to sort of do a few more of these sorts of things. So there's actually um, an event on in Sydney in uh, the 4th of December. I'll send out an email about it, but um, that will be part of Digital Humanities Down Under and with the Canadian group to uh, uh, keep this going, keep conversation going. So that's a, just, a, just a sort of flag that there are, we, we'll try and find other opportunities, uh, you know, probably tagged onto other events to um, bring people together again around these kinds of issues. And of course there are other networks, you know, the Open Government Partnership uh, that Ken talked about is um, really important and uh, seriously neglected area that uh, uh, would be great for people to participate in um, or any other sort of alliance. Um, okay, so we've done videos, so hopefully they'll go online in the next week or so. Um, and we've got an evaluation. You know, somebody's got an evaluation. So if you've got a near, we've either got print copies or we'll send one around tomorrow. So if you want to do a quick um, you know, fill in a form now and it's over and done with. That'd be fabulous just to get some feedback on you know, what you liked about the day, what you'd like to see again. Doing events is a relatively new thing for APO. It nearly kills us, but you know, <laughs> it's just really fun. I, <laughs> I find it fun now, that's, especially now it's over. Um, <laughs> Uh, we thought we, if anybody's interested and not exhausted, there's a bar around the corner called Bar Humbug. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and Michelle's going to put that up. So that's, uh, I, I just looked it up, I don't, it, it looks nice enough. Uh, 586 <laughs> Little Bird Street. Uh, we don't like it, we can just wander the streets. But five yeah. minutes, five minutes around the corner. Yeah, so we're just, just if anybody's interested, uh, wants to, you know, just relax and... Um, so, quickly, thank yous, a huge thank you to all our speakers today. Uh, I think you'll all agree we've had an incredible talent uh, and it's, um, I, you know, I really appreciate the, the support given by many of our board members uh, who are, you know, really senior people in their uh, profession and, you know, it, it's, it's really, I, I just thought the, the quality of the speakers today was just incredible, it was so wonderful. Um, I'd like to thank our partners, uh, Swinburne University, the Uni University of South Australia and ANZOG who all contribute uh, to the core that helps keep APO going and the Australian Research Council um, and our LEAF partners and particularly our board members, so the wonderful Jane Farmer. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's chair and uh, Lisa Gibbon, uh, Peter Graham who wasn't able to be here, um, Denise Meredith, Susan Luckman, Monica Pfeffer, and Catherine Althaus, who you heard from, um, and uh, Julian Thomas. Thanks to Engineers Australia, thanks you to all our publishers and organisations and advertisers and collection sponsors, etc. Uh, and of course our readers and uh, users of the database. Um, and everybody who contributes to it. APO is very much a collective effort. Um, and finally, a huge effort to the APO, a huge thank you to the APO team that put in uh, a massive effort. As I say, we're not regular uh, event managers and it always seems like, oh, well, next year we'll have a full checklist of everything that we need to do. Um, so it's, a, it's running around trying to uh, get everything together. Emily Sylvester, our uh, marketing and comms person, has um, <laughs> been absolutely wonderful and thank you so much. And Michelle Zwegerman, our uh, operations director. <laughs> and can, all, can APO people, this is Penelope Aiken, uh, Les, yep. uh, Tim down the back, who's your uh, wonderful editor. Uh, Ian, who you've met, uh, who's been before, Camillo, you might talk to Camillo, he's a developer. Uh, Adam has just joined us. Adam? <laughs> Have I missed anybody? Grace. Grace. Grace and Grace, yes, thank you to Grace, who's an intern uh, with us from La Trobe. Um, we do interns, and um, any of you would uh, have students 
that you would like to send along, especially if they're as amazing as Grace. That would be <laughs> really fantastic. Um, and I think that's I think that's all. Okay, well, um, we also obviously have to thank Amanda. Oh, she's amazing! Isn't she? There is no package like Amanda because we've been trying to figure out all the amazing things that Amanda is and she's just kind of one of a kind. So I really want to, I know the team are awesome, but all teams need an awesome leader and this is one. So, yeah, thank you. Don't you think she looks like a new Doctor Who? And she's Scottish. I want to be the new Doctor Who. <laughs> all right, thanks everybody and hopefully come and have a drink and uh, we'll, we'll get the knowledge system sorted after a, a wine or two. <laughs>